Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, I saw a piece of news online recently that's being hailed as the greatest archaeological discovery ever, potentially. An archaeologist by the name of Nicholas Reeves believes he may have discovered the tomb of Egyptian Queen Nefertiti, who lived in the 1300s BC, only about 100 years after the Israelites' exodus for the Promised Land. She is famous for ruling during one of the wealthiest periods of Egypt's history and is even thought by some to have ruled as Pharaoh for a short time during the end of her life. Her body and her tomb had never been discovered up until now, and just where she ended up has always been considered one of Egypt's greatest mysteries. The theory is that in the famous tomb of King Tut, there appears to be a false wall that may have been bricked up after someone was laid to rest behind it. Because Queen Nefertiti reigned immediately before, uh, before King Tut, and because the murals painted on the wall seem to depict Queen Nefertiti's life and death, archaeologists are hoping that means that they have found what they have so long searched for. Now, they're not exactly sure how they're going to get in without damaging anything. And they're not sure what they're going to find when they do. But an untouched tomb from such a wealthy period could mean unspeakable treasures unlike anything we've ever seen. Now, I'm not an Egyptologist, and I hate to rain on this parade. But if this theory is correct, and they really have found Queen Nefertiti's tomb, I think I know what they're going to find there. They're going to find a 3,000-year-old mummy with nothing but grave wrappings and dry bones. And no matter what they do find there, as far as gold and jewels and whatever else, the one thing I'm fairly sure they will not find is life. It's kind of how these things work, you see. But not always. And that's why we're here today. Because one Sunday morning, some 2,000 years ago, some women discovered a different tomb. Not one buried and meant to be hidden, but one with its doors blown off, almost as if to say, come in and see. This tomb may not have had treasures like Nefertiti's, but from this tomb came the kind of treasures that are too big for money to buy, and now they're all yours for free. Never before or after has this kind of tomb ever been discovered. But for these women, that didn't mean that they got to write a fascinating news article in some archaeological journal. No, it meant that they got to be the first heralds of a message that changed this world forever. Only for them, this message wasn't so much exciting as it was ironic. I mean, the greatest news ever told that brought life and immortality to light came from a graveyard of all places. That's just not the way this world works. But thank God for it anyway. Because the irony of the resurrection is how our God won eternal salvation for us. Our story starts at first light on Sunday morning when a number of women who had followed Jesus all around Israel caring for his needs set out to pay him their final service by anointing his body with spices for burial. The darkness of that morning was only deepened by the darkness of their sorrow. But as the sun came up over the horizon and they approached the tomb, they noticed something odd. The stone was rolled away from the entrance. This tomb was supposed to be under heavy guard, with, uh, uh, roped up and sealed by order of Pontius Pilate himself. And the stone, really it was a boulder. It could only be rolled back and forth in its groove by multiple grown men working together. But yet as they approached the tomb, they found the ropes burst. And as they found the rock lying on its side away from its 
away from its groove, away from the entrance. They found no guards anywhere. It was almost as if something supernatural had happened here. They had never seen anything like it before. And so cautiously, they approached the tomb to look inside. But to their horror, they saw nothing. Only grave clothes. Jesus was gone. Luke puts it like this. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. What they didn't expect to find, they did. What they did expect to find, they didn't. Everything here was the opposite of the way it was supposed to be, and that just turned their whole world upside down. But little did they know, that the irony of that discarded stone and the empty tomb was a symbol of the victory of life over death that day. The seal the soldiers put on the tomb, the rock that covered it, the ropes that held it tight, all were burst before the almighty power of the rising God that nothing, not even death in the grave, could keep down. Those women may not have realized it right then, but what they found proved Jesus' triumph over the devil and all the forces of evil, and it proves that he is our perfect Savior, that he is the true Son of God, and by his death on the cross, it really was the perfect sacrifice to pay for all of our sins, to satisfy God's justice, and to crush the devil's head forever. Make no mistake about it. The Easter story is not just nice thoughts and words meant to make us feel better about ourselves and the world around us as Easter approaches. It is not just the opiate of the masses, as it's been called. No, the Easter story that we celebrate today is the most significant event in all of human history because it means that our history will continue on into eternity. But that was not always a given. See, ever since that first, ad, uh, that first man and woman, Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden, when they fell into sin, this life has been a slow march toward death that no one has been able to escape. Because of our sins, we were condemned to die and condemned to hell, separated from God forever and doomed to suffer only His eternal wrath and punishment. Left to ourselves, that's what we deserve. And nothing can we do about it. Those women were hopeless as they stood there at the entrance to Jesus' empty tomb that day. They thought that Jesus was dead and gone, and that meant that their faith was futile. They were still in their sins. God's wrath was unavoidable, and hell was inevitable. So what do we do now? Luke says, while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Not for one more second would God our Heavenly Father have His children despair. And so like a bolt of lightning, He sent those angels to come and share with those women the irony of the resurrection. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen just like he said. Tombs are for dead men, but the one you are looking for is alive forever and ever. And do you know what that means? That means Christ is risen for us. Christ has destroyed sin and death for us. Christ has won the ultimate victory over all evil for us. If the devil wants to hurt us now, he has to go through Jesus first. And that's not going to happen. He is the living one, the one who has all authority to live and die and rise again, the one who has shattered the chains of the grave. 
and the one who lives and reigns for us to reconcile us to God, to intercede with the Father on our behalf, and to give us eternal life and every good thing in paradise with him forever. Death can't touch him anymore. And so also death has no power over us, his people, anymore either. Its sting is soothed. Its victory, vacated. And now for us, death has become nothing more than the front door we walk through to get into our heavenly home. Our greatest and most fearsome enemy, fallen before our greatest and most glorious enemy, champion. That's what the Easter story is really all about. And the beautiful thing is that now we can have the same certainty about where we stand with God as Jesus did about how he would get us there. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Jesus told his followers ahead of time everything that was going to happen. He told them to trust him because this was all according to God's plan. He was in total control the whole time. But yet these women and the disciples were still slow to believe. They still tended to focus only on the bad rather than on the good. And even after all these years, some things just don't change. Because that's still our tendency too. But the irony of the resurrection does change all that. Yes, we are naturally inclined towards sin and fear and doubt. This world can be a scary place. But when our God makes a promise, when our Savior speaks... Nothing can be more sure. He is absolutely trustworthy and faithful, and Easter proves it. Because Christ is risen, all your sins are forgiven. All your fears are dispelled. All your doubts have been put to rest. Jesus himself says so. All your guilt and shame and disgrace have been paid for and left in the tomb with Jesus' grave clothes, never to return, gone forever. So when the devil tries to creep back into your head, do as the women did. Remember Jesus' words. Go to the scriptures, the sword of the Spirit, to fight off every evil attack. And no matter what bad things may happen to you in your life in this broken world, always remember what Jesus has done to overcome them all. Your parents die, Christ is risen. Your spouse is sick, Christ is risen. Your child gets in an accident, Christ is risen. You lose your job, Christ is risen. You've had a bad year, you're worried about the future and you don't know what to think about where this country and this world are headed. Christ is risen and so nothing else matters. Remember his words. Our Savior lives and so we also will live. We belong to him forever and no one can rip us away. Because he isn't here in the grave, he can be here with us always. And one day we can be there in heaven with him. You know, all throughout Lent and Holy Week, we've been studying the ironies of the passion. From beginning to end, everything surrounding Jesus' suffering and death was ironic because that's never the way it should have been. The Son of God, the perfect Son of God, should never have had to suffer and die for sinful humanity. It was completely backward and upside down in a bad way. Well, my friends, the irony of the resurrection 
is every bit as earth-shattering and far-reaching only in an infinitely better way that brings peace and joy with God forever. The irony of the resurrection means that now for us, life does not inevitably lead to death. No, death gives way to eternal life with all of our brothers and sisters in faith and with our risen Lord himself. The final, the final journey to Jesus' empty tomb those women took did not reveal the finality of death. It revealed the finality for death. Easter means that death ends in life. It means that your sins are forgiven. The devil has fallen and heaven for you now stands open. Because let's say it together. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.